Hey, what's up? If you're new to this channel, welcome. My name is Reggie Bryant, and this channel is all about personal finance and personal growth, where I show you how to save money and make more money, all while bettering yourself every single day. Today, I want to talk to you about financial lessons that I learned throughout my adult life that I wish I knew at 18. Like, if I had my 18-year-old self in front of me right now, this is word for word what I would say to myself. So we're going to jump straight into this. I'm going to tell you everything I learned the hard way so you don't have to. Just do me a favor. If you're over 18, try not to get too upset when you're watching this video. Let's get into this. If you're between the ages of 18 and 30, you spent most of your life in school. And I'm here to tell you, school doesn't really teach you anything about money. And that's kind of what we need to survive. So there's three things school fails to teach you when it comes to your finances. And that's emotions, knowledge, and your habits. All three of those play a major role with you and your money. So I'm about to break it all down for you. The first piece of financial advice I want to give you is don't let your emotions control you. Not only have I been guilty of this myself, but I've also witnessed my friends, peers, and family members go through a lot financially just because they didn't have their emotions under control. You're probably listening to me thinking like, how is this financial advice? And I understand exactly where you're coming from because I never knew my emotions could have anything to do with my finances either until I looked around and saw how much everyone cared about what other people thought about them. Even through high school, because that's really where it started. If you didn't have the freshest, newest Jordans on, you were lame. If you didn't have a car, you were broke. That emotional connection in this case was pride, trying to impress people and make yourself look good just so you don't get looked down on by a bunch of kids who don't even have money in the first place. So in that case, your emotions can get you to spend money that you don't have on things that you don't need just to impress people for no reason. But on top of that, I've watched people walk out of their full-time jobs with no other options just because they had a bad day. I've seen people talk themselves out of really good opportunities just because they had a bad attitude, just because they started their day off bad. Maybe they stubbed their toe, I don't know. But they were in a bad mood. Look, I'm gonna be straight up. In the adult world, no one has time to deal with your crap just because you're having a bad day. No one wants to work with someone who's temperamental and can't control their emotions. And that's with jobs, partnerships, business ventures, getting into certain schools, mentorship, everything. People want to work with someone who is coachable, receptive, someone who can have a bad day and not make it known because they can push through those obstacles that we all go through in life. And while we're on the topic of emotions, I want to tell you a quick story. I've seen a lot of men and women spend a lot of their time, money, and resources on someone who wasn't worth it. I remember seeing this couple at work a few years ago, and if the girl called off, the guy called off too. He was like, huh, if she ain't going to work, I ain't going to work. We both going to be broke together. I remember this one time there was a girl who was going through a breakup and she couldn't handle it to the point where she called off every day for two weeks straight and then randomly quit. Yeah, all that time, all that money spent on someone who wasn't even worth it. Don't mess around and miss a paycheck just because you're so in love with your significant other. Don't you do it. As you can see, that emotional investment has a lot of weight to it. So I want to tell you something real quick. Something similar happened to me when I got my first full-time job. I could have let that experience distract me. I could have caught off of work every single day and crawled into a corner, but that would have costed me my job, which would have costed me money. You see, we can't just walk off like babies whenever things don't go our way. Sometimes you have to toughen up and just deal with it. And even though this isn't a dating advice channel, I want to say this before I move on to the next topic. If you see any red flags at all when you're dating somebody, don't ignore them. And most importantly, don't invest your time, money, and energy into someone who belongs to the streets. Yeah, I said it. Y'all know what I mean when I say that too. If y'all don't know what it means, basically, ain't no good. Because if you do, all that's going to do is take you further away from your purpose and away from your money. People out here are trifling nowadays, so you really have to be careful with who you spend your time, energy, and attention on. It could be costing you. Now, once you got your emotions in check, the next thing to focus on is your knowledge. There's so much stuff that school neglects to teach you about the knowledge of money that it makes my head spin. The crazy part is I'm not even about to tell you anything crazy. Like I'm not saying you have to become an accountant or financial advisor when it comes to what you need to know about money. What I am saying is there's basic survival skills in what I'm about to say. And anyone can apply it to their lives right now. But a lot of people don't because when you think you're doing just fine with your money and you're successful based off of what school and society tells you, you live your life blind to your mistakes, and that's a very dangerous place to be. So I'm going to explain to you why it's dangerous, and I'm going to give you some advice. And if you take this advice, it'll save you a lot of headache and hardships. Here's my advice. While you're young and you still have the time to do so, educate yourself on financial literacy. Literally, go to Google, go to YouTube, and type in financial literacy. 
And I say that because you're not going to come up with every single financial term there is off the top of your head. What the internet is going to do with that is going to break it down into different search terms like budgeting, saving, debt. Then we'll get a little more advanced. And then you'll be learning about taxes, inflation, how to buy a house, cost of living, how to invest. These are all things you will absolutely run into in your adult life. And instead of going into it blind, you'll have a solid basis to start from. Now, this channel you're watching right now is a great resource for that. But I'll be honest with you, I'm not an expert and I definitely don't know everything. I'm still educating myself on this stuff every single day, every chance I get. And if I only knew this stuff when I was 18, my personal finances would be looking a lot different. We're not just going to stop there, though. There's also time management. That's another thing school isn't very intentional with teaching us about. Now, I'm not saying there's absolutely no education on it at all, but it's something that a lot of young people struggle with. And when I say young people, pretty much anyone between the ages of 18 to 35, most of them struggle with time management. Let me ask you something. How many times have you said, man, that day flew by. Where did the time go? You know what I'm saying? How many times did you have to scramble at the last minute because you procrastinated? Because if I had a dollar for every time I told myself, man, I just, I don't have time. I'd be a rich man. You know what I'm saying? The truth to that statement is that it's actually a lie. You have time. You're just not making time. And that, my friend, is costing you money. See, when you get a full-time job, you're really going to be limited on time. And your life is going to continue to move forward as you get into relationships, as you build a family, as you work your way to move up at work. When you decide to start your business, you're going to be busy. And that's not even including hobbies. That's purely just talking about your future family and your professional career. If you can't prioritize those things, it can do a number on your mental health. And earlier I know I said sometimes you got to tough it up and just push through it. Well, some people can't handle that. Like we all have different pain tolerances when it comes to what we can handle mentally. And if you're not properly educated on how to manage your money, if you don't know the basics of budgeting, and if you don't learn what debt is before you get into it, you're going to be hurting. Then add that on to the fact that you'll probably get lowballed on your salary when you get your first job. And you're still going to have bills to pay, so you're really going to want to look at the cost of living in your area so you're not spending your entire paycheck just on living expenses. Living paycheck to paycheck. Looking sick. That on top of the stress you might deal with at work or even outside of work can break the strongest of people down. And it hits so hard because we don't see these things coming. Pretty much from the beginning, we're taught go to school, graduate, get a good job. That's it. That's all you have to do. That's the end. We're not taught to challenge or question what we've been taught or what we think we know. No, we're just taught to accept it and run with it. Well, yeah, I'm living paycheck to paycheck, but so does everyone else. So that's okay. I, I still have nice things. Sure, I have more debt than I make in a year, but you know, everyone's in debt nowadays. I guess you can't have it all. BS. That's BS, bro. And then you know what happens? We start to fall flat on our faces and then we start to feel like failures. And I know because I've been there before. I know what it's like to do everything in your power to be successful inside of work, outside of work, and still fail, still get ridiculed, and then go home second guessing all my life choices. Because I knew that could affect my money. I used to beat myself up so much that I doubted my ability when it came to pretty much anything I did. And that poured into multiple areas of my life. Do you want that to be you? Because that was me. And I'm telling you right now, I will never go through that mess again. See, school teaches us that failure is a bad thing. But if it weren't for those failures, I wouldn't be the mentor I am today. And I wouldn't be able to help other people learn from my mistakes. Now guess what? Those mistakes and failures are making me money. Your boy is getting paid for something that most people give up on. Let that sink in. Now, I just want to tell you one more story because this is what actually got me into personal finance in the first place. Keep this in mind as I'm telling you this story. You are a combination of the people you know and the habits you have. So here's the story. I went throughout high school never being taught about such a thing as multiple streams of income. I was never taught about passive income, making money work for you, or even making money in your sleep. Nah. I was taught that the key to success was to work 40 hours a week for the rest of my life. As I slowly move up the corporate ladder and I slowly further my education and get into more debt. That's the key to success right there. Yeah, that, yes. Yes. So like any good student, I follow that path. I sign up for grad school and everything. I went to work with high hopes of moving up and being the company man and just going as high as I possibly could on the corporate ladder without any intention of putting together a side hustle that I might be able to find another stream of income in and honestly more fulfillment in. 
And to be honest with you watching this video, something I used to sleep on was how important it was to get fulfillment out of what makes you money. So you're going to be making good money someday if you're not already, but if you're not fulfilled doing it, you're going to feel like there's something missing. Like it's going to be like this empty feeling you have inside. Now, based on the fact that I've talked about side income a little bit, you probably know where I'm going with this, but I'm going to say it anyways. School teaches you to rely on one stream of income while you have a family that you're responsible for feeding and providing a roof over their head. One stream of income. One. Can you believe that? You're expected to rely on one company that you work for to pay you every other week for the rest of your life. As if pandemics don't exist, as if layoffs, mass firings, downsizing doesn't exist. Matter of fact, last year you probably saw what I saw. A lot of people filing for unemployment. A lot of folks losing their houses, even businesses as well. Like, I mean, if that doesn't wake you up to the fact that you need more than one stream of income, I don't know what will. So anyway, back to my story. I'm a worst case scenario type of person, you know what I'm saying? So I took that way of thinking and I created a series of what ifs, and I'm not going to lie, they were pretty bad. What if you get fired from your job because you suck at your job? What if your company shuts down out of nowhere for no apparent reason? This was when I was like 21, by the way. I'm 25 now, so the what ifs have calmed down a little bit. But anyway, these what ifs got me to prepare for the worst. It got me into saving money. And then I learned something that school definitely doesn't teach you, and that's saving money actually isn't enough. I felt so strongly about this that it inspired me to make an entire video about that topic by itself. You can check it out up here. And here's how I found out saving money wasn't enough by itself. I had to realize that saving money is a good thing because you can have it on the side and ready for your disposal if you have an emergency or as the old folks call it, a rainy day. I'm playing, I still say that. People call me old too, so don't feel bad. I had to realize that on top of saving money, I needed to actually make more money because that actually makes the process of saving money a lot faster. Makes sense, right? And on top of that, any excess money that you have that you can afford to lose needs to be invested consistently for several years. Because if not, you straight up won't be able to retire. I just think it's funny how school pushes you towards specific careers but doesn't prepare you for retirement. And they don't even tell you how much money you're going to need to retire. So I'll tell you how much that is right now and I'm not even doing this to scare you. As inflation goes up, the dollar loses its value. That's exactly why you probably hear your parents complain about milk and gas prices going up all the time, and there's absolutely nothing you can do about it. And by the time you hit retirement age, the value of a dollar is going to be much less than it is now, which means you're going to need that much more money when you retire. So people in my age group, like I said, I'm 25, they're going to need a few million to retire. Like I'm talking 2.5 million or more invested in order to retire. And that's to live pretty much the same lifestyle that they're living right now. If you don't believe me, check out my video on how much you need to have saved and invested by every age. It breaks it down in a lot of detail in a very entertaining way. So back to my point about habits. Throughout all the experiences that I just described, I didn't fold and I didn't throw in the towel. Instead, I built habits. And those habits are always learning about personal finance, learning more ways to make more money, actually trying out those ways to make more money, Learning about passive income. By the way, you might actually want to write these down. And lastly, sharing my knowledge with others. This isn't my only financial advice video for 18 year olds. I have like three others and if you're young, I definitely encourage you to check out all of them because they all focus on a different message. Whether it's discipline, relationships, making more money, surviving at work, or just surviving in the adult world, the real world. These videos intentionally focus on these and they go way more in depth than I do in this video. So do yourself a favor and check them out so you can be a step ahead when you get out into the real world. Anyways, that's the video for today. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Reggie Bryant and this channel is all about personal finance and personal growth so you can control you, control your finances and control your life. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Don't forget to subscribe and like this video. Stay cold.